Single parenting isn't easy. We understand. Most parents don't plan to go it alone, but you can still make the most of this journey for your children and yourself. In fact, if you and your family are on that journey, this podcast is for you. Welcome to the Single Parent Advocate community and to our podcast. And here are your hosts, single parent founder, Stacey Poitras, broadcast journalist, single dad and friend, Daryl Moody. Welcome back. Uh, to the conversation. I am Daryl Moody, and we are talking about dating as a single parent. Uh, this is a part two of a two-part episode of the Single Parent Advocate podcast. Uh, I'm joined again by Stacy Poitras. She is the Single Parent Advocate, the inspiration behind our show. She's at the beautiful SPA studios there at the Work Innovators Venture X, the realm at Castle Hills in Dallas, Texas. Stacy, get us into the next episode. So Daryl and I, um, we both have had a different kind of take on dating. We're going to be digging into that today and um, <laughs> hopefully finding some common ground. And uh, so just join in. We want to hear from you and uh, also, you know, share your comments, share your experience. At the end of the day, we all just want to grow as a community. So let's dig in, Daryl. Enjoy. Dating. Well, a lot of times, um, so I, you know, I work on myself also, you know, even as someone who's remarried and it's real easy to um, identify sometimes with your job, you know, who, am, if you ask yourself, who am I? Um, sometimes I am a media and marketing person. I am the founder of Single Parent Advocate. I am married to Steve. I am the mother of... Chris, I write poems. I like to dance. I like to travel. Those are all things that I do, mm -hmm. right? And um, sometimes in relationships, if we are, you know, dating or we can, we can um, basically attach ourselves, you know, to somebody else and their opinion of us becomes more important than our opinion of ourselves. Their values become more important than our values and sometimes we just don't listen to ourselves anymore you know that, and that's, that's not a good thing though right? no and that so. you know that's what i like about what i'm hearing from you today is that you know you've done that work also and you're you're in tune with yourself as an individual you know we've talked a lot about you know well you you Go ahead. You, find, you find that people who take on their partner's personality traits or values or what have you, you know, those people don't typically have a strong personality. I think you've figured out by now I have a pretty strong personality. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I don't see myself really kind of taking on other people's personality traits or that sort of thing. Yeah, no, I, I, I just brought it up as as a kind of an idea because I think it's important that all of us, no matter what stage of the game we're in, whether we're dating somebody, whether we, you know, we're in a blended family, whether we are, you know, um, thinking about getting our toes back in the dating water, a good best practice is to always be working on your heart work, you know, body, mind, and spirit, you know, and know yourself and take time to make sure you don't lose that if you do enter into uh you know dating and and whether you're you know dating around or you're dating one person you know for me i never did date around i was always you know like one person at a time <laughs> you know they could i couldn't cope with all that other but um you know, it's it's important not to lose yourself in in oh I I want to go find a mate I want to go find a mate I want to I want to restore and be married again I want to have the white picket fence again and you get so caught up in the pursuit of your dream if that's your dream you do lose yourself you can lose yourself and if you lose yourself what is that going to do for your children There was this TikTok video I saw and there was a young lady, she, she looked like she was 12. And she literally, it was nine o'clock at night, she got on and she said, mom, it's time to come home, I'm lonely. And it was just like this teary-eyed teenager. And the, you know, I know, I don't even know what would have. Where was mom? I, I don't, I, because she was out on a date. 
you know, and I guess the lady thought more about going out on a date. I don't know what their dynamics were. It didn't say. I just, it really kind of scorched my heart a little bit. Um, I don't know. Some people, you know, put their desires for love and maybe it gets a little bit out of whack. And I, I think if you're going to date, just know it's not just you that's dating. It's you and your family if you have one, number one. And number two is keep it in check. Don't go over the deep end, um, you know. And number three is stay in touch with yourself, independent of all of that. Don't let it become where you are changing yourself in order to get more dates, you know. Uh, well, you, you talk about dating around. You're, you're, you're going to cringe when I tell you the story, but I'm going to tell you anyway. So two weeks ago, uh, I went out with a woman. Uh, I met her for drinks and we were talking and she's like, look, I, I got to be honest with you. I hate this process. I hate, I hate talking to multiple men. I hate having to talk to multiple men. I hate going out with multiple men. She's like, I'm going to be honest with you. I was out with a man last night, Thursday night. You and I are meeting for drinks tonight. I have a coffee date tomorrow night and then another date Saturday night. Wow. So, you know, that, so that woman was handling, handling, handling it like, a, like an HR person doing job in her. <laughs> so Sounds just, like it. So she's just churning through candidates. Uh, an update on that one. I made it to date two, but by date two, uh, she had, and, I, and I, she started off with four. I made it to the finals, but I lost out. I didn't get the rose. How'd that make you feel? you know, they're, they're either going to fall in love with you or they're not, you know what I mean? So if they don't, then I'd rather just move on. You know what I mean? I mean, I liked her. She was fun. I, I thought we would have fun together. Uh, I, and of course there's the natural disappointment that she chose somebody over me, but she was upfront about it. Yeah. She told me, you know what I mean? And, and, and I can't, I mean, I can't, I, you know, I told her, I said, well, I mean, you know, full disclosure, I'm, talking to six different women. I've only been out with you and I have a date next week with this one. Um, you know, I, I, so. So it's almost like you're comparing each other's dating activity to see who's out and about the most. It sounded like just now, you know, like, well, Oh, I've got see, these four, how, these five or six, and I've got these four or five or six. And like at any point, does it feel like a competition? Like, Oh, I'm getting out, you know, I've got my whole week filled with candidates. No. I, and I, and I, I'll tell you the reason why I didn't take it that way was because she opened it up with, you know, I hate doing this. She yeah. opened it. She opened that conversation up by saying, I don't enjoy this process, but this is what I've got going on right now. And ultimately, when she when she told me I didn't make the cut, she said, look, I, you know, I've enjoyed our time together. I've really enjoyed talking to you. You're a great guy. Uh, but I've just had more face time with this other gentleman. Uh, things, you know, we've had a connection and, you know, I'm just going to go forward with this guy, you know. And she asked me, can I keep your number? I said, absolutely. You can keep my She texted me this week and was like, hey, how are you doing? Just wanted to say hi. You know, let me know how your date Friday night goes. I mean, I don't know if she's keeping me as a backup plan or what, but <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. I mean, I can get, I can get my feelings hurt about it or I can accept it and move on to the next one. So, yeah. you know, I chose to accept it and move on. Well, I think there's just, you know, the topic is filled with a lot of, of uh, people's different comfort zones. And I think if we were to talk about, you know, every day, like practicality as it relates to managing dating, if you want to date, I would say always, always, always put your children first. You know, that never should stop. Um, in my book, you know, it's, it's you're a parent first. Um, that's my my two cents, you know. Um, I also believe in taking care of yourself so you can take care of others and daring to dream and making sure that you have a life and, and you can build a life that you want. Um, so keeping that in check, you know, uh, making sure that, you know, that is um, in the right balance, wouldn't you say? I mean, you wouldn't well, want to overdo it, as especially if you start putting that before parenting. 
Well, of course. I mean, I, I, I echo everything that you just said. Of course, you want to put your kids first. But, the, you know, I think it's just important to point out to the viewers and the listeners, there's no right or wrong way to do this. I mean, well, you navigate yeah. your life, you know, in the way that you can answer to your creator about. So whether you date or you don't date, I mean, it was, you know, the, the longest relationship that I have had in my process of dating post-divorce. I was with a woman for nine months and she, her story was she didn't date for the first six years after she was divorced. She said, you know, for her, she was paranoid, I guess we'll say, about meeting the wrong kind of guy and perhaps having somebody in her life who victimized her two daughters. So for her, she was like, I'm not comfortable. And she didn't, she didn't really start dating until, you know, one was already almost graduated from high school. Um, I mean, you talk about, you know, introducing your significant other to your children. I don't think there's a really a perfect timetable for that. I know with that woman, you know, we were together nine months, we waited six. And, and when we finally did introduce her to my kids, she brought her two daughters. I brought my two daughters. We all went out and played putt putt golf and then went out and had dinner and it was a group activity. So everybody met everybody. Um, our first overnight stay with her. Uh, and she was to her credit. She was really thoughtful about this. She was, and, and she said it this way. She said, I would rather you guys stay at my house that way. I'm not invading their space. So, right. you know, I, when, when the first time that we do this, it's not, I'm not, I'm not taking over their right. home and their space with you. You know what I mean? You guys are guests in my home. It just, it just, you know, and I really appreciated that, you know, that approach. Yeah. And, and, and then there's a lot of different schools of thought about how to introduce your children that, you know, you, you should not bring them into a dating environment until you, you know, really have had some time together and, and you both agree and, and you've talked it over with your children and let them know what's going on and, you know, in the most healthy way. And I really think, you know, also, um, for me, the dynamic of just remembering, I'm not just bringing myself into a dating relationship. There's absolutely, in my case, you know, I didn't have my son every other weekend. He didn't go see his dad. He never, I mean, he was always with me, you know? So if you um, are a person or were a person that, you know, wasn't comfortable with a young man being around, you know, it probably not going to work out between us. Right. And so I literally had somebody tell me one time, I'm not interested in um, anyone who has a child. Oh, wow. It's not, it's not the, the, the place in I'm looking for, not the kind of life I'm trying to build. Very pragmatic. It was and like, I, ouch. Well, and I, I encountered that one time I, you know, I matched up with a woman on, I think it was Bumble and we were texting back and forth and it was almost like she had, gone back and looked at my profile again. She goes, oh, I see you have two little girls. I respect that you're a single dad, but I want kids of my own one day. And I said, well, I'm open to having more kids, but I just met you. <laughs> right. But, but I mean, you know, she basically said, hey, I'm sorry, but I'm not looking for single dads. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm looking for somebody who wants to start their own family with me. And to her, to her, when I was 30 years old dating, that's how I felt about it. I didn't want to, I didn't want to take somebody on and raise someone else's kids. 12 years later in life, I have a much different attitude about it. Um, and, and you better believe that every woman that I talk to or date or, you know, uh, think about moving forward with, you know, my first thought is, would she be a good stepmother to my kids? You know, so, you know, to your point about keeping your kids first, I, I feel like any good parent is going to do that naturally. It's easy to get caught up in the in the the dating scene. I, I, it was for me anyway. Um, I, so much so I really shut down about it. I, I just I, I couldn't I couldn't balance it all between, you know, work being there for my son, my hobbies and interests, and then um, also, you know, just like I said, needing to work on myself and all the chores. And it just, it, it didn't feel like I was available until my son was really driving. He was almost driving, 
you know, I would, I, I did, I did have, like I told you, you know, two or three guy friends. We were totally platonic, and then I had a couple of boyfriends along the way before I remarried. But um, I, I just, it wasn't for me. I wasn't into it like that. It, it just was. Maybe I would be like a serial monogamous person, you know, more than somebody that would go app hopping and dating around like that. Um, and and well, even in that situation, you know, like I said, it was almost like when we decided not to be together anymore, it was like me and my son were breaking up with them. And that was probably hard. If I could have redone or done that differently, I would have for my well, own words, you know. For me, this this is my approach. So when I met the mother of my kids in 2009, I met her on Match.com. She was literally the second woman I went out with. The first lady that I went out with, it was a great date, ended up at her place. Obviously that's not going anywhere. She was the second woman that I went out with. And I went out with a third woman, but, but didn't, have, didn't, didn't really enjoy her company. So I kind of chose my kid's mom, if I'm being honest, probably too soon. I probably should have dated around, you know, because there was, you know, there were red flags, but I didn't run from them the way that I do now. So, you know, my attitude in this second go around, if you will, is I really want to like, just get a decent sampling, you know, and I've identified that I have a type and she's no good for me. I, I love spoiled brat high maintenance princesses, but they're no good for me. So, you know, I, when I meet a woman and she's like, Hey, listen, I've been through a lot. I've had a, you know, I've had, I've had a rough go of it to me, you know, that carries a little bit more weight. Cause I'm like, you know, she's experienced life. She's going to, she's going to stick with you when things get rough. People that don't go through adversity in their life, they run. So for me, you know, when I'm talking about you, you said, what am I looking for? You know, I think first, is, is kindness and compassion and understanding and loyalty. And I think that, you know, I mean, I'll be honest, when I, when I, when I went, when I set out to begin dating, I had in my mind, I want a 32 year old woman, either with no kids or one little kid. I want to get married. I want to have at least another kid. And I want the family that I felt like I lost. That was, that was my goal. And I dated Women who are older than me with kids who are older than mine. I've dated women who are younger me, younger than me with no kids. And I think the conclusion that I've come to now is that rather than looking for a woman who is in a certain situation or has a certain, you know, fits a certain thing or, you know, has so many things going on with her life, I am more concerned with finding somebody who is a good match for me and somebody who will be my best friend and a good partner. Uh, and obviously my kids factor into that decision, but, you know, rather than finding somebody with kids, my kid's age or somebody with no kids, or, you know, rather than that being a determining factor, I'm looking more toward personality types than I am, whether you fit the mold that I'm looking for. Well, it sounds like eHarmony would be a place for you then, because you're more about the personality matching. But they tried to match me up with my ex-wife, Stacey. I can't trust those people. Trust broken. Trust broken. Yeah, we're done. <laughs> I, and, 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 you know, and, and if you're talking about, you know, eHarmony, how do I know people are answering those questions correctly? They could be, they could be sociopaths, but they know, how to, they know how to answer the quiz so they look like a good person. And then you meet them and they, they harvest your soul. <laughs> wow. So, you know, I don't know. I don't know that the personality test is any safer than any other methodology. Well, I think for me, you know, uh, we are all, you know, we're not perfect, you know, and there's um, definitely a lot of, of bumbling. I went, you know, along trying to figure things out and I can see where you would feel that way. You know, I. I tend to get a little bit just kind of closed mouth about dating because it's just been um, an area where I've, I, I just shied away from for so long, you know, well, and every, everybody that I've met that has said, Hey, you know, I've got this in my past or I've had this happen or I've got this, you know, I tell them, I, listen, at this age, we're all damaged to some extent. We've, we've all been dinged and nicked and, 
you know, suffered a loss or been hurt or been cheated on or had our trust broken. You know, we've all we all have damage at this point. It's just Well, I would out- say one of the wisest words as it relates to that that I've heard lately, and this is in my own work on my own self that I'm doing, is to remember just because you've had that kind of stuff happen in your life does not make you damaged goods. And it doesn't mean that you need to settle for somebody, you know, who uh, has patterns that are not healthy for you, you know, or your kids, you know, uh, just because we have, and I say it all the time, you know, remember you're not broken. If you're a single parent, there's nothing broken. You know, you are a single parent family. You are a single parent. You you know, you can't see yourself as damaged goods, you know. And and, and, and to you're speaking you're speaking to me when you said that i mean i can remember having a fight with a woman that we broke up with and i told her i'm she you know toward the end of the relationship she told me every day what was wrong with me you know, a million times what was wrong with my kids and this and that's the one that we were together for a while but i had to tell her i'm not broken i am not broken i've been through a lot and i and i you know i've got my scars but someone's gonna love me someone is gonna accept me for who i am they're gonna accept me for my quirks and my habits and they're going to say he's good enough for me. And I just um, and I just remember keep I remember saying the words I am not broken. I'm not broken. And that starts with you um knowing that you're not broken deep on the inside before you bring somebody else into the equation. And that's where, you know, I think taking some time after a divorce to get to know yourself again and take a little bit of a slow go of diving back into the dating water. Well, but 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 to your point, Stacy, I've learned a lot about myself in you the have. process of dating. Well, you have and you can. You learn people's feedback for sure. But you need to have your own self-esteem, your own uh, realization that you're not broken and that you're not damaged goods and your own healthy dynamic with your kids and they need to know the same things about themselves before bringing somebody else in my opinion into the equation and um you know we we tend to think we have to go and fix ourselves so we have to fix ourselves body mind and spirit but and then we have to fix ourselves by finding friends and people that we go out with to tell us you know the things that we need to know about ourselves instead of just going, you know, I am going to know who I am. I'm going to know that I am not broken. I'm going to know that I've got as much as possible in order in my life before I bring in another person and let them tell me who I am and who I'm not. So let's call that our official stance on dating as a single parent. <laughs> make sure you're in a good place before you go bringing someone else into the picture. I think we can agree on that for sure. Because we both kind of had a different um, approach, right? Um, you know, if we were to look back in my life. So I well, like where you, we landed. You made it to the finish line. I haven't made it to the finish line yet. I'm still, I'm still on, you know, turn four. Anybody turn, who's well, married, say, anybody oh, who's turn, married. one. With anybody who's married, and I'm not stepping all over you, but anybody who's married will tell you it's not a finish line. <laughs> it's just a different kind of work. <laughs> right, right. But I mean, you know, I, 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 whether I'm married or whether I'm, you know, whether I cohabitate and live in sin with someone for the rest of my life, I just want to end up coupled with somebody. And as long as I end up with a partner, then I will feel like I have achieved my goal in this process. Now, like I said, I used to have what I thought was my definition of the finish line, the goal. Uh, but I, like I said, I, 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 I have opened that up quite a bit, while at the same time focusing in on on really what would what should be more important. Yes, which is you know your family dynamic and your kids and your job and everything else, I, and I, then. I mean, every woman that I meet who says, you know, I just want a peaceful, happy, quiet life. I'm like, well, then we ain't for you. <laughs> it's my kids and I, we're constantly screaming. And we sound like six people. And it's really just three of us and a dog. 
Well, gosh, you know, Daryl, I feel like we could talk about this forever. <laughs> it's a I, really. Look at, I see Eric. Eric's telling us we got to go. I know. We, it's really been uh, fun talking about it because, I, you know, I can't even imagine, you know, being in those shoes or back in those shoes. You know, I bet if I were back in those shoes, I'd probably clam up again, though. <laughs> I, I'm just trying to make lemonade here. You're doing great. And you just need to know what a great guy you are. And uh, I like where we landed about, you know, we need to make sure that we take good care of our own mental, spiritual and physical well-being before we dive back into dating waters as single parents. Yeah. I like that. That That's really smart. All right. Father's Day is around the corner. Singleparentadvocate.org. Donate to the cause. Follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram. Where else are we? Oh, we're Don't everywhere. YouTube, right? YouTube. We're on YouTube. YouTube. That's been yeah. all those. We need to. We need to have everybody subscribe and share our podcast channel too. So, single parent advocate on YouTube. We're Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and even on LinkedIn. And let us know what you think. Tell us if you like. If you got a subject matter you'd like us to tackle, we're we're more than happy. We want to hear from you guys, too. We, we really um, hope that you will write about your dating stories <laughs> so Daryl doesn't have to talk about all of his. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. See you, folks. <laughs>